everybody welcome back to my channel how are you doing are you all right lovely 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 i don't have any life updates sorry i'm very boring you see i'm i live the same day every day today we are going to be talking about jessica de Laurentiis once again i have a bit of an obsession with jessica de Laurentiis because i think the writing surrounding jessica's character was so good like okay listen i slate the writers here and there when needed to do you know like come on like some of it is deserved no that's very mean of me let's sometimes it's due criticism do you know what i mean however i also like to give credit when it's due and i think the writing surrounding jessica's character was really really good uh, i did a video on jessica before and how i think she's kind of like honestly like the true villain of pretty little liars and within it i said that the writing for her character and the overall kind of like suspicion they write surrounding her character is so good and was like some of my favorite parts and i really like jessica's character not morally don't get it sick and twisted all right morally she is very disturbed however the actual character the structure of the character who she is what she did and the kind of villain aspect surrounding her i really really enjoyed it and i really liked her character for that in all honesty today we are going to be talking about her death and kind of how i think her death was a significant turning point in the show and a significant kind of catalyst for like kind of future events on the show because ultimately her death opens up a lot of doors to us exploring mary's character being introduced to mary learning more about cc's story learning more about alex drake's story more about spencer's story and also peter hastings um so i feel like it opens up a lot of windows for a lot of characters on the show and it helps us to explore a lot of stories much further and kind of understand context towards situations i've made a little like it's not a graph it's a thing <laughs> to help portray kind of the relations between these people much further so we will be getting on to that but jessica's death i've kind of split it up in three parts there's before her death the day of her death and kind of like after her death and like post her death i thought we could go through the timeline of it together and really kind of explore what went down why it went down um and kind of the impact that it has on the wider show jessica de Laurentiis is obviously the mother of allison and jason are those all her kids <laughs> i'm like trying to remember the family tree in my head i'm pretty sure because cc alex and spencer turn up to be somewhere okay all right jessica de Laurentiis moves back to rosewood in season four which was a year after allison's body had been found and kind of straight away there was a lot of suspicion regarding jessica from the liars because they wondered kind of like why is she back now why didn't she come back sooner type of thing there's a plot hole in here somewhere because obviously maya moves into the de Laurentiis house and Maya kind of gives away a lot of Allison's things. However, when Jessica comes back, she kind of says that like she kept Allison's room the same and never changed it. So I don't really know what goes on there, but I just thought, let me just point that out. Anyway, several days after that, Mary Drake appears. We obviously don't see this. This is just the chronological order, but we don't see this until like later on. Mary Drake shows up because she wants to see her biological daughter Spencer. Spencer Hastings. Spencer then appears into the picture. Mary Drake is Alison uh Jessica's twin. We're kind of like led to believe she was like the evil twin, but honestly they were both really evil to be honest. Um I kind of feel bad for Mary here and there in some aspects. Yeah, Mary is Jessica's twin. We don't find this out until she comes in season 6B. Um 
but that's who mary is but mary is spencer's biological mum spencer also has a twin called alex drake so Spe- uh, mary comes to see um spencer mary breaks into the hastings house but she's actually caught by peter hastings she reveals herself to be mary rather than jessica and let me talk about peter hastings because he is a menace yeah i feel like if peter hastings had just kept it in his pants we wouldn't be in this situation. I blame a lot of everything on Peter Hastings because he just, he couldn't keep it in his pants. Peter Hastings is obviously with Veronica, but he had an affair with Jessica De Laurentiis, which led to the conception of Jason. Now, one thing about Peter Hastings, he will father children. He will have a expansive family tree. Do you know what I mean? If this was The Sims, he would be doing the 100 baby challenge. Do you know what I mean? He will father. Not father in a good way. This is this is not a mothering. This is not a father's equivalent. He will father many children, okay? Early on in the show, we find out that Jason is his biological son. And then, obviously, at the end of the show, he has alex drake as well so he ends up being a father to melissa spencer jason and aria aria girl where did aria come from alex is what i meant to say peter hastings ended up conceiving he didn't conceive he wasn't pregnant he ended up getting someone up he got mary pregnant because he was having an affair with jessica de laurentis um and mary kind of posed as jessica which i think gets underlooked in that aspect because peter was assaulted um and i feel like that doesn't really get spoken about as much as it should be but yeah peter is the cause of many things on this show to be honest and i feel like if he was just out of the equation would we be in this situation no so peter hastings don't do it again okay and i truly hope you've learned your lesson here mary kind of begs peter to help kill jessica which oh but then peter hastings like refuses and he ends up coming up with a plan with jessica to kill mary instead now let's not get the sick and twisted peter hastings because you've caused all of this and now you want to kill people to stop it Mm. it kind of feels like to me you might be avoiding the consequences of your actions. And that's just... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Sorry, forgot to say. So Mary wants to kill Jessica because Jessica ultimately took Alex, Spencer and Cece away from Mary. And Jessica also lied and said that Cece died when Cece was Charles. Um, So all this time, Mary thought she had lost a child but turns out obviously cc is alive well not anymore but was rest in peace actually actually during season four again mary goes back to the hastings household to try and convince peter hastings again why could she have not done it without peter hastings girl come on like feminism come on but then jessica ends up walking in and she's like oh Oh. and then she says to peter hastings i thought we were taking care of this so then mary is like oh i see what's going on here mary's like oh these people want me dead right interesting very very interesting indeed okay then mary's like right i'm, I'm taking it into my own hands enough's enough So then we get on to the day of her death. Jessica was hosting like a bridal um, like show thing. I think she was raising money. Anyway, Holbrook comes along and is like, we're gonna, um, I forgot the words, but they're gonna dig up Alison's body to examine it again because they don't think the person in the grave is Alison. And Jessica's a bit against it because obviously she has links to the night that Alison went missing. Anyway, long story short, all right, they tell Jessica that Allison is alive. So at the police station, 
Pete, Peter Hastings goes to Jessica and he's like, do we still, like, is the plan still on? Now, Peter Hastings, please, can you stop annoying me? Jessica's like, sorry, all I can think about right now is my daughter. Like, she's alive. Like, can you leave me alone? Yeah, tell him. Tell him again for me. At one point in the evening, Jessica De Laurentiis goes home and she starts emailing Cece saying, I can't protect you anymore because obviously Alison is coming back and uh she probably assumes that Alison will say everything that happened in terms of cc hit her and jessica de Laurentiis kind of covered it up however she doesn't actually send the email at this point um so i think we're left to assume that she goes to see cc at some point anyway so jessica and peter's plan to kill mary was to change her medication and basically poison her However, Mary intercepted this medicine at one point and instead poisoned uh, Jessica's medication. So that is how Jessica De Laurentiis ended up dying. Her heart stopped because she was poisoned by her medication. Now, I I know I can't support this, all right? But I, I feel like it was a bit of a girl boss move by Mary Drake there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jessica. Like killing your sister before she was able to kill you by doing the same technique that she was going to do to kill you yeah yeah bit of a girl boss that i fear anyway so then we have the scene that we all know at the end of season four when Cece finds jessica's body now this is kind of a plot hole as well because Cece ends up kind of i guess taking credit for the death and sends a video of her burying Jessica to the liars. I don't I don't really know why Cece would do this because she loves Jessica very much and Jessica was kind of the only person there for her. Um, and when she found Jessica's body, we saw how distressed she was about it. So I don't really know why she would take credit for it. And if the the writers maybe didn't know who Mary, um jessica's killer was going to be at that time or something like that i don't really know why they made cc do that to be honest um but there we are so then we have kind of like after her death so allison returns to rosewood and she returns to the house with her dad kenneth and jessica's not there and they're like okay that's a bit weird they don't really think much of it however the next day jessica's still not there and jessica was going to adopt a dog to stop it from being put down so they deliver the dog but jason's like well she's not here so take it back but allison's like no we're gonna keep it everyone's like where's jessica right like where did she, where is she gone um so kenneth ends up going to ashley um to look for help and ashley logs into her email i think ashley's working for her at this point um to look for any kind of like clues on where she could be and then they're that's when they find the email i can't remember if it's them that finds it or if it's hannah i think but that is an email that the one i said before saying that uh she can't protect cc but they don't she doesn't say who she's just like i can't protect you anymore so then they're like oh okay the dog from earlier right ends up barking in the backyard they're like oh someone please what's going on with this dog and then it turns out the dog kind of like dug up where jessica's body was and we see jessica's kind of hand and everyone's like oh i'm gonna have to read this an initial autopsy is unable to determine jessica's cause of death Alison later tells Spencer that a toxicology report confirmed that somebody had switched her blood pressure medication, causing her heart to fail. Spencer originally suspects that one of her parents killed Jessica, but later events stopped her from pursuing this. Um, yeah, there was a period of time where Spencer thought that Peter had done it. And also she thought Veronica could have done it because Veronica was jealous of the whole like affair thing. And technically she wasn't wrong with Peter, but like, not really. Anyway, so later on later on is when we find out all this information about like actually what went on because peter hastings tells veronica and spencer about everything 
Um, and then also Mary confesses to the murder, but she also confesses to Archer Dunhill's murder. Um, so she kind of takes the fall for both of them. Uh, well, no, she actually did kill Jessica, so she didn't take the fall. She did it. But Archer was killed by Hannah. Um, but she ended up kind of taking that as well. So the liars didn't have to do that. Um, I honestly didn't mind Mary Drake to be honest obviously morally she's not great as well but like everything jessica put her through like i forgot to say but mary was in radley when she was a child because jessica was babysitting um a child and the child wouldn't stop crying so she called jessica over but um i think jessica ended up killing the child um and blamed it on mary so that was a whole thing i was like wow like okay that's whatever my kind of point of this was really to signify the importance of jessica's death and i feel like in some shows um deaths like this are done for pure kind of like shock value and things like that but i think jessica's death was so needed for the show in this point because obviously if Alison had come back everything would unravel quite quickly but also like I said it opens up the doors for so many characters and we learn a lot more about so many people like we learn a lot more about Mary about Peter's whole history with the situation which therefore influences the whole kind of like Spencer Alex and Cece thing to kind of like unravel i guess and i think it is very crucial at this point in the story and like i said uh, i said in my older uh, jessica diederintis video i think jessica diederintis was kind of like the catalyst for everything that happened on pretty little liars and i truly think her death as well is kind of like the catalyst for the future of the show and I just think it came at the perfect time and I think the writers were so perfect to do it then. Also, I remember at the time when Mary got revealed to be the killer, I was quite underwhelmed by it and I was like, oh, that's so obvious. But like looking back now, it honestly is like kind of perfect to be honest because I don't really know who else would kill Jessica uh like i feel like no one would get to the point people hated jessica but i don't think they would get to the point where it's like oh i'm gonna kill you but mary doing it is actually kind of perfect and kind of like getting revenge on like the evil twin um and i think it makes a lot of sense and also because we didn't see it finding it out afterwards i think was really really cool um so i i think actually mary drake being the one to do it was actually kind of like spot on and perfect to be honest i just think jessica's significance um in her character pre-show and her death is so crucial to the show and i think season one to four doesn't happen without jessica de laurentis and what jessica does pre-show and i think season four to seven to be honest doesn't happen without jessica as well i think jessica's influence on the show is very overlooked um she kind of starts everything and i think her death was a major importance and a major kind of like significant factor in you know when the show kind of transitions to from allison to spencer i think setting that up with jessica's death And I think ultimately Jessica's death was that turning point of the show kind of being passed over from um, Alison to Spencer. Um, And it kind of sets everything up well and it kind of like interwines with everything. And Jessica's connection with kind of everyone on the show and kind of every story on the show, I think is very, very important. I think her death really kind of signified this so that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed leave your opinion down below regarding jessica's death um and your opinion on it or your opinion on my opinion one of them make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys